Hi colleagues, to have a wish to proceed further with some integration technologies which we can use in our backend developments with using Java, today I would like to observe some interesting and relatively new technology. It calls gRPC. As usual, I will provide some base theory regarding gRPC and I will make a demo where I will show you how we can develop our backend applications uh, with using this technology. By using this QR code, you can find all sources of program code on my GitHub. Also, I provide a link to my GitHub where you can find a repository for, for the project which I will show you. Let us start first from the answering the question, what is gRPC? Overall, gRPC is a highly performance open source RPC framework initially developed by Google. RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. Also, it helps to eliminate boilerplate code and connect the services. The framework is based on a client-server model of remote procedure calls, as I said. A client application can directly call methods on a server application as if it were a local object. You can ask me a question, why do we need a gRPC? And here I have listed an answers for this question. First of all, gRPC is a strongly typed API and specification of services. gRPC is based on protobufs. This topic I will discuss it a little bit later, but here I would like to say and highlight that there is no null values. There is an out-of-box code generation, client-side and server-side. There is an auto-serialization and deserialization of our, our objects. And also, there is an API-first approach is implemented. It's very important in nowadays development. gRPC is very performant uh, integration technology because under the hood, it uses HTTP2 protocol. HTTP2 provides high level of performance and efficiency. And also, there is a client load balance and automatic retry. When we say HTTP2, we understand faster performance and better efficiency because of binary protocol, because of using multiplexing in HTTP2, and also because of using header compression in HTTP2. gRPC supports different modes of communication. First is UNRI RPC, UNRI Remote Procedure Call. If you're familiar with RESTful APIs, this model is familiar for you. It's a usual request response model. The second one is server streaming RPCs. Also, if you're familiar with WebSocket technology, this model, this mode of communication of gRPC is equal, almost equal to uh, WebSocket. There is also client streaming RPCs, the mode of communication, and also is bidirectional streaming RPCs. Next, let us say several words about HTTP2 and its features. As I said, HTTP2 has header compression. Compressing headers reduces their size in terms of numbers of bytes that are transmitted during the connection. HTTP2 is a binary protocol. It means that it uses a binary format for data transmission in contrast to HTTP1X, which uses the text formats. And also, HTTP2 has a multiplexing. Multiple requests share the same connection during communication. It's also important to understand the difference between JSON and gRPC. JSON doesn't support document scheme. Protocol buffers have strict scheme definition, which has data type safety. Regarding protocol buffers, we will speak a little bit later in details. Also, JSON has a text format of representation. That is why serialization and deserialization and slow and requires a lot of resources. Protocol buffers is based on binary format. That is why serialization and deserialization is faster. Now let us jump to the program code. In my project, which you can find on my GitHub, we have a proto directory which contains several subdirectories. These subdirectories have some different proto buffer files. Let us take a look on one common dot proto file. Here in this file we can see the following that we use syntaxes port over to three that Java package is equal to this uh, literal string, that Java multiple files is equal to true. It means that, we, uh, that uh, the multiple files of Java will be generated. Also, we can declare some enum. For example, here we declare a video category. And also we, here we have declared a message type with name video, which has the following fields. First field is title with type string. The second field is rating with this int type. 
The third field is named category with this data type, and the fourth field is description, again with uh, data type string. To summarize a little bit protocol buffers data types, here in this table you can find uh, uh, data types which can be used in protocol buffers files. That we have used some int, flow, double, bool, string. Also, we can use map and enum. Also, uh, on the right column, we can find that for each type we have a default value. Now, let us get acquainted which protocol buffer files do we have in our project. Each protocol buffer files is served different model of, of communication, which I listed previously in my presentation. Here we can see videocontroller.proto. Here we have declared message type video request with one field user ID, and uh, the second field is cate video category. Also, we have declared message type video response, which return us uh, video. And also, we have declared a service with name video controller service, which is a typical unary RPC call to retrieve a video by it uh, by, for, for user ID. What we have here? We, here we have a, a usual request response service. Next file is video store.proto. Here, as usual, we have two message types for request and response, one service with which name is video store service. And here we have a method for this service, get movies by video store request. But now here we have server streaming RPC call to receive a stream of videos. Next file is recommender.proto. Here again we have two message types, one service, and one method for the service with name get recommended movie. But in this case we have client streaming request. That sends a recommend request and receives one response. The last proto files is user preference.proto. Here we have two message types, one service, and one method in the service with name get short listed videos. But in this case, this method is for bidirectional communication. As you can't understand, this project is around video service and video pre and user preference regarding videos. A little bit further, I will show you how it works. Before jumping to uh, details of how our application works, let us take a look on gRPC concepts for Java. There are three artifacts. First one is a channel. A gRPC channel provides a connection to a gRPC server on a given host and port. Client stop. GRPC supports two types of client stops, blocking one, synchronous, and asynchronous stops. And the third one is a stream observer. Service implementations and clients use stream observer with on next, on error, and on, on complete methods to receive and publish message using GRPC frameworks. Here in GRPC server implementation submodel, I am using a Spring Boot starter for GRPC, which is up in a channel for us. With using Split Boot Starter for my gRPC server, I am able to make settings in application YAML. And here in application YAML, I am set up a port for my server and another settings. Now, let us take a look on two service implementations. The first one is video controller service implementation. As you remember, our video controller service has one method with name getVideo. This method has video request method, which is taken from proto file. And actual class for video request is generated with, with using gRPC Gradle plugin. Here, video response is a type parameter for stream observer. If we take a look on our method body, we can see that here we are building video. Also here we build in video response. And here we are calling method on next of stream observer and passing video response to our client. If we take a look on the second service implementation with name video store service implementation, we can see again the method of this service get movies, but we are calling method on next of stream observer in the loop. It means that here we are making server streaming. Now I have run my gRPC server and I can test uh, the server with using Postman. I am going to test video controller service and video store service. As you remember, video controller service is, is, is the usual uh, request response API. 
After invoking, I am receiving my video with title, rating, category, and description. If I run test on under video store, I just send in category, and I am receiving, let's say, the stream of answers of this API. Least but not last, let us take a look on programmatic gRPC client. Here in our client, we are building an array of our requests. Then, with using uh, client tab, uh, we are receiving a stream observer for our uh, request. And this client tab is generated by using gRPC uh, plugin of Gradle. Then, in the loop, we are sending our request one by one with colon method on next from this stream observer. And uh, here, when we are calling method get shot listed videos of our uh, client tab, we are bypass a class user preference request stream observer. And this class is some sort of listener of our responses. Here on next, we are receiving our responses and making a log of it. If we run our gRPC client application, we can see in the log that we have received three responses from our gRPC server. Here we are. As last words regarding gRPC in Java, I would like to touch some subtopics. It's about gRPC plus Kotlin. Is it better than with Java? Now, market is tending to use Kotlin instead of Java in new development. At least, probably, we are trying to make first attempt, because Kotlin has a lot of syntax sugar, and it's a main, let's say, advantage against Java. And also, it's true about when we use gRPC in Kotlin. We can use native coroutines, which is supporting gRPC. We have enhanced type safety. And also, we have more concise and readable code. Now, it's all from my side, which I wanted to say regarding gRPC and using gRPC in Java. You can find the project by using this link on GitHub or with using this QR code. If you like this video, please put a like sign under the video.